Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you're all having an awesome day. My name is Andy with Boatworks today. And this week, I want to go over a question that was raised by some of the folks over on Patreon. And having been done this for a long time, I know that this is a very common question. And there are variations of it, but generally it runs along the lines of, I'm getting ready to start a project up on my boat, and I don't know what type of resin I should be using. Now, kind of chase that down a little bit further, and ultimately it comes down to, I'm getting ready to start a project on my boat, and I don't know what resin was used when they built my boat. Because depending on how, it, you know, depending on what resin was used, it does somewhat dictate what resin you have to use for your project going forward. Now, that said, I am gonna cut to the chase and say, again, I'm gonna just use some even numbers here. That, I, that roughly 90%, if not more, of all the boats that are out there, uh, old, new, doesn't matter, I would say 90% at least were built using polyester resin. Why? Because it's cheap. Well, relatively inex inexpensive. There's, nothing's cheap anymore. <laughs> but 90% were built with polyester resin. Now, the other 5%, uh, there are some boats that are built using vinyl ester resin. Not n nowhere near as many, but there are some manufacturers out there that do use vinyl ester resin. Now, is, when you're talking about poly versus vinyl, is there a difference? As far as compatibility, no, not at all. Uh, they are 100% interchangeable, compatible with one another. I mean, if you wanted to, you could mix them together and use them. I don't know why you would, but you could. Now, the other 5%, are those boats that are gonna be built using epoxy. Now, one little kind of caveat I wanna mention about this. Now, you're, typically your boats that are built using, poly, or using epoxy, they're your really high-end boats, uh, the ones that are well into six-figure um, cost-wise. Now, there are some, there are some exceptions, uh, like your high-end kayaks or canoes, something like that. Um, specifically, you know, uh, vessels like that that are utilizing like Kevlar or carbon fiber, those will be built using epoxy. Uh, but when we're talking, but I don't think that's, for the most part, that's not what people here are, are working on. They're tinkering on their Rhinels, their uh, Bay Liners, their, um, you know, Tierras, Benetos, Catalinas, you know, whatever they have, whatever, basically production style boats. So although it is generally a, pretty safe bet to presume that you know, your boat was built using a polyester resin, it's still always nice to try and look around for little visual cues. And here is one perfect example. Now to the right, this boat was 100% built with polyester resin. How do I know that? Well, because it's green. When you see green glass work like that over there, that is 100% going to be polyester resin. Now over in the corner here where I did some reinforcement, I did that using epoxy. You can see how that's kind of a slightly more of a, like a yellowish kind of a tint. There's the difference. Now, polyester isn't always green. So polyester resin, well, let me, let me back that up. I should say the really high quality polyester resin. Typically, before it's catalyzed, it has a color to it. Sometimes it's uh, like on the blue side, sometimes it's on the green side. Now, your cheap stuff that you're gonna find at the, the big box stores, or your automotive places, that's gonna be pretty much brown coming out of the can. You just want to avoid that stuff like a plague. It's very unpredictable, it's probably old, and it's just not really, it, it's not a material you want to be working with. So poly resin, after it's been catalyzed, it changes color. Uh, sometimes, after it's cured, it'll stay green like we just saw up on the Bertram. Uh, other times, like this stuff from Total Boat, this tends to turn almost kind of like a purplish kind of a hue. Uh, other brands, they will kind of maintain a little bit of a bluish tint. It really varies brand to brand, but the main takeaway here is if you're seeing green or purple or blue or even, yeah, it, if, if they were using kind of a, a lesser quality resin, even that brownish type resin, most likely, well actually not most likely, that is going to be polyester resin. Now epoxies have their color variations as well. and that's almost entirely dictated by the type of hardener that you're using, whether it's a slow, medium, fast. Uh, some are formulated just to be crystal clear, but regardless of that, they generally fall under three different types of colors or shades. Uh, the first one being is just going to be water clear, just crystal clear, it has no color or tint to it 
whatsoever. Now the other kind is going to be, uh, so depending, usually like your faster hardeners, they are going to have some type of a, a tint to them. And sometimes it's going to be yellowish, like this. Uh, other times it could be, you know, a little bit more on the pink side. But generally they fall under those three things, clear, pink, or yellow for epoxies. So on the left here is the cured polyester resin that we started this video off with. And, you know, as you can see, looking at it, it's got a purplish tint to it. Now, the stuff that's kicking my tail trying to get out of the bucket, this is the epoxy. Now, for this particular batch, I use the fast hardener. Uh, fast hardeners, as I just mentioned, are typically more tinted than, say, like your sp uh, your slow hardeners. So this particular stuff from Total Boat, this kind of cures you like a Mountain Dew kind of a yellow. <laughs> So what's the takeaway here? Well, most likely your boat was built using polyester resin, especially if it's an older boat, say, you know, late 90s or older. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be polyester, you know, resin that was used for the, for the construction. Now, older boats, that's also, you know, even though they're pretty much guaranteed to be done with poly, that's also where it can get a little bit tricky because, you know, older boats, obviously over the years, they've probably had some work done. And, you know, if you're not the one that did the work, who the hell knows what the previous owner used, right? So, there is a little bit of a guessing game, but there are some sure telltales, specifically on the finish that was used over top of the repairs, that will tell you what type of material that they used. All right, so let's just throw out a quick example here. Uh, let's just say you're, you're, you're coming into a slip and you kind of kiss the dock a little bit, or you're power loading up on a trailer, which probably shouldn't be doing, but I know it happens. But so you're power loading up on a trailer, you kind of overshoot it a little bit and you basically run into the, the bow support on the trailer where the winch is. And you punch it in either situation, you end up punching a little ding or whatever through the fiberglass. Now, easy fix. However, when you actually start getting into it and kind of grinding everything back to do the repair, all of a sudden you notice that, huh, this has been repaired once before because uh, you're seeing different layers of different materials because the colors are different. Now, again, you know, at, 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 to an extent, it's somewhat of a guessing game, but you know, kind of the easiest way to determine what base of uh, materials were used, whether they're polyester or epoxy or you know whatever, is look at the type of finish that was that was used over top of the repair originally. So, for example. If the, you know, when you're, di when you're digging into the area that's damaged and that was all gel coat, it's pretty safe to presume that any of the prior repairs that were done were also done using polyester resins. Now, uh, you know, it, where it can get a little bit dicey is if, it's, if the hull was painted. Uh, and if you're, if you're going to be doing a repair and you're going to have to paint anyways, you know, better safe than sorry, uh, epoxy grabs on to anything and everything. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at a situation like that, you're going to be best off, just better safe than sorry, to do any of your repair with using epoxy-based materials, including the fairing, and then go over top of that with the paint and, you know, blend it all in. Now, uh, for one, one situation where I'll say, you know, pretty much always use epoxy is going to be any work that you would need to do that's going to be below the waterline. Uh, just simply for the fact that epoxy, when we're talking about uh, water, permeation or mitigation or basically keeping the moisture on the outside of the boat and not inside the hull. Epoxy just excels at that better than any other type of resin. So if you're doing something below the water line, I would just stick with epoxy 100%. But when you're looking at something from the water line and up and you're going to have to blend that into your surrounding area and you know there was some damage repair or some previous repairs, look at how they finished it off. Again, if it was finished off with gel coat, all the prior work was done using polyester based materials or vinyl ester, again, interchangeable. And if it was painted, just better safe than sorry, go with epoxy. Now with that said, if all this seems to be about as clear as mud, I do have a downloadable guide that I put together a few years back that goes through all the ins and the outs, the details, and kind of gives you a, a, a bit of a schematic as far as it'll help you choose which resin to use for your repair or restoration project. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, you know, a lot of people have found it extremely helpful. But if it is something you're interested in, I will have links down below in the description for that. And if it's not something that you need, well, that's perfect. Well, then, then University of YouTube has done its job, right?
<laughs> and with that said, I think this is going to be a good place to end the video. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate it. New videos come out for the most part, uh, I'm going to say every Sunday, 9 a.m. Central. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, and I will see you next weekend. This has been a Boatworks Today. Today.